Today we discover the story of one of America's most iconic buildings, a wonder of the modern world, the Empire State Building. For nearly half a century, this grand Art Deco tower held the title of the tallest man-made object on Earth, soaring above New York's existing skyscrapers at a staggering 1,454 feet from base to antenna. And although the Empire State Building continues to hold its title as one of the largest office buildings in the world, with around 2.8 million square feet of office space, it faced fierce competition by the Chrysler Building, a fight ultimately won, but rewarded only by a decade of near vacancy. This is the story of the Empire State Building. In April of 1929, a new competitor had entered the ring to contend for the title of the world's tallest building. The newly founded Empire Incorporated refused to let Chrysler keep the bragging rights, and while it took more than a dozen revisions for the design to be fully completed, plans for construction finally started to move forward. The design was handled primarily by Shreve, Lamb, and Harmon, an architectural firm founded the previous year in 1929, who planned for the completion of the building to stand at 1,250 feet in total, easily surpassing the Chrysler Building. The logic of the building's construction plan was surprisingly simple. According to Thought Company, the space in the center was arranged deliberately to be as compact as possible in order to efficiently contain the vertical circulation that ran throughout the building, including things such as mail shafts, corridors, and toilets. This was then encased by a 28-foot deep perimeter of surrounding office space with fewer elevators ascending as given floor space decreased. This design allowed the tower to reach never-before-seen heights. It also came at a consequence. The building was staged around a pyramid of non-rentable space surrounded by a much bigger pyramid of rentable space. And this would not be the only compromise made. The company went to insane levels to behold their record. On March the 17th, 1930, groundbreaking in preparation of the placement of the building's foundation began. No expense in the $50 million budget was spared in securing the materials necessary to bring this titan of New York architecture to life. According to the Empire State Realty Trust, the completed building used an estimated 200,000 cubic feet of Indiana limestone and granite, 10 million bricks, and 730 tons of aluminum and stainless steel. Due to the immense size of the project, all new construction equipment was purchased and custom fitted to the task, and a railway was constructed at the site to move materials quickly and with less effort required on behalf of the workers. The 10 million bricks were dumped down a chute into a hopper in the basement of the structure. When needed, the bricks would be released from the hopper and then dropped into carts, which would be hoisted up to platforms then to be laid. This saved busy New Yorkers the inconvenience of street closure for storage, which was the customary practice of construction at the time. The new method of storing bricks also saved workers from having to spend immense amounts of time and effort transporting the bricks all over the construction site manually with wheelbarrows. Richmond Shreve, one of the three founders of Shreve, Lamb, and Hammond, who worked on the project, once stated that things were so incredibly efficient on the site that they once managed managed to build 14 and a half floors to completion in a mere 10 days. Roughly 3,400 workers were employed on the project and at generous pay rates, working at a breathtaking pace of four and a half floors a week to ensure the construction process went as quickly as possible immediately after the first steel columns were placed on site on April the 7th, 1930. On May the 1st, 1931, the Empire State Building was finally complete, all 102 floors, including its many amenities. Like the hotel that once stood in its place, all of New York was amazed as the Empire State Building had been finished a month ahead of schedule and under the expected $50 million cost, with the latter being a discount offered by the Great Depression.
the iconic red ribbon was cut during the dedication ceremony and President Hoover symbolically pressed a button in Washington DC with the building lighting up to great fanfare as actual switches inside the building turned on the lights to welcome all who gazed upon the magnificent structure. And after just a year and 45 days, the Empire State Building had managed to surpass both of its competitors, emerging once and for all as the winner of the race to the sky, as the tallest building in the world. And here is where the story takes a very unexpected turn. 